Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Maggie Mejia, founder of She Matters University, where we are teaching women how to find their brand voice and leadership identity. I'm excited for you to hear all of the great things that we have coming your way. And I wanted to introduce this podcast in January, which I decided to start a weekly podcast. Yes, um, I want you to Take a seat, get your favorite drink, because we are going to be talking all things health, relationships, money, business, purpose, spiritual growth, and of course, my favorite topic, the mind and your emotions, and how they actually get in the way of you building a massively successful and abundant life and business. So go ahead, please subscribe and check out our first podcast. Hey, what's up? What's up, girls? It is January. Okay, are we ready? Are we ready? Listen, I don't know about you, but I love New Year's. Why do I love New Year's? Because everything feels like a fresh start. It feels like the chance to start over, right? Who doesn't like a fresh start? But What's different about this year and what I want to talk about this year is, are you ready for something new, right? Are you having a fresh start or a false start? We have to know how to determine the difference because I don't know about you, but even statistically, it says that people who make New Year's resolutions, by the time March rolls around, You only have 6% of the world that follow through with their resolutions. That's a very small percentage. What that tells me is that 94% of people who thought they were going to have a fresh start are actually having a false start, right? So many of us are ready to go into the new, but what we don't realize is that it requires something new of us. It requires for us to determine that the map is not the territory. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the entire map, look at a map like it's your life, right? And when you look at a map like your life and then you look at where you're located, whether that be in Pennsylvania, in New York, in Arizona, in Idaho, in Connecticut, I don't care where you are, you can't determine the entire map by where you are right now. And in the same sense, you cannot determine where you are going by where you've been, right? But that is the habit of human nature. We only know how to base what will come by what has happened, by our experiences. How many times do we think that getting the new job, we're still gonna have the old problems? Going into a new relationship, we're going to start seeing attributes of the guy that was in our life, right? Going into a new city or a new state are going to come with the same problems of where you lived. What I'm going to tell you is that life is 50-50. So you're going to experience the bad with the good, right? You're going to experience the trial and the tribulation with the triumph and rejoicing. You're going to experience both. But what we fail to see is that moving forward requires you to see from a different lens. Moving forward requires you not to base what is coming and what you're going after and everything you're believing God for according to what you've been through and who has rejected you and how you've conditioned yourself and the circumstances of life that you've been through are now awaiting you at this new place. The map does not determine the territory, right? I want you to think of Abraham, even in Hebrews 11, when they talk about faith and everyone's faith. And I just want to specifically talk about Abraham and Abraham's faith to go to a different city, to go to a different place, to a different location and trust God with what he didn't see. I'm going to take it a step further and talk about when he had his promised son, the son that God gave him, the son that God promised him in his old age, okay? He was in his, he was a hundred years old 
when God gave him Isaac. But then God tells him to sacrifice Isaac. God tells him to go up to the mountain where he will sacrifice the boy. And Abraham goes to the unknown, to the uncertain, to the thing that he feared most, that what he wanted most happened only to lose it. And yet he walked in faith. Are you so scared of what you want that you feel like God is going to take it away from you before you even have it. So you self-sabotage so that you wouldn't have to feel the disappointment moving forward. Every single time that that passion rises up in you, that that desire rises up in you, you find every single excuse as to why you can't have it. And we sit here and we just say, well, maybe this is God's will for my life. Is it? Or have you closed yourself off to the relationship? Have you chosen to sit on the couch and not get up and start working out? Have you chosen not to adopt children? Listen, just because children haven't come from your womb does not mean that you can't move forward in adopting a child. You just might be a mother without a baby, but God has even provided a way for you to do that and take care of a child who would call you mom. 2022 is about leaving the excuses behind, about leaving the limitations behind, about leaving the complaining and leaving the self-sabotage and the self-pity and the unworthiness, all of those things. I'm not saying that those things don't need to be worked out in somebody, but there are some things that you can just choose, but we choose not to. And I'm going to tell you why. When I say the map is not the territory, I mean that we don't have to base our future on our past, right? Where we're going by where we've been. However, there is a reason we get stuck all the time. There's a reason that we keep doing the things we used to do. We keep being the ways we used to be. We keep feeling the ways we used to feel. And it's all because we've been conditioned to react to life according to our past. And so what happens is, is that we get stuck. I want to talk about life cycles for a second, because I was reading a medical article and it's from the medilibretext.org and I'll link it in the show notes. And it was just talking about the life cycles of a human being. And so I want to give you the ages right now. The reason I want to give you these ages are because these show up in your business in your life, in your health goals, in your relationships. It shows up everywhere. But we don't necessarily pay attention to these things because we all go about life on autopilot, meaning that we get up, go to work, do our thing, support our kids, say hi to our husbands, cook for our families, clean our house, go to sleep, get up, do the same thing all over again the very next day. And I'm not knocking you for that. Believe me, I want you to know that this podcast is a judgment-free zone. But when I tell you I have had new levels of breakthrough and I have had new levels of seeing God in the prophetic realm and how he wants to use me, I too have felt and feel these ways. Don't think that new levels don't mean it's going to feel any different than what it feels now. It's actually leaning into the feeling so that you can pour your life out and so that you can serve people and that you're willing to put your life on the line and be brave enough to free someone else from the chains that they are going through. How serious are you about that call? I do want to talk about life cycles because I think it'll help us understand a lot of our conditioning. And conditioning is not just for the physical. Conditioning is for the emotional. Conditioning is for the spiritual. Conditioning is for our entire being, mind, body, soul, and spirit. So as I was looking this up on this article, it said that you have eight different cycles of life. You have when the mom is pregnant, which I found interesting. It's when the zygote develops into an embryo and prepares for birth. So that's the very first stage. Then you have infancy which is from birth to one years old, toddler, which is from two to three years old. You have childhood, 
which is from four to eight, puberty, which is from nine to 13. You have older adolescent, which is 14 to 18. You have adulthood, which is from your older adolescence to your end of life, beginning at the age of 19. Middle age, which is adulthood, stretching out from 31 years old to 50. And then you have your senior years or your old age, which extends from 51 to end of life. And the reason I wanted to mention that is because our prefrontal cortex, meaning the place that we make decision, this is all of our decision making. This is the place of consciousness where not that we're just on autopilot or working out of a place of our brain that kind of like knows how to brush their teeth, drive a car, like not those habitual things, but critical thinking, right? When you are planning your time management, when you are planning your year, your every quarter, those things, your prefrontal cortex is where all of your decision making happens, but that's not fully developed until you're 25 years old. And the reason I wanted to make mention of that is because from adulthood, we start at 19, but in the middle of that, at 25 years old is when the prefrontal cortex has its full capacity. As you were growing up, you hardwired yourself, your responses, the way you reacted to life. Those things were hardwired in you. So by the time you become 25, even though it's fully developed, Here's a reflection question for you. How would you rate your decision-making throughout your years? Have you always made the best decisions? Do you like where you are in life right now? Would your life be different, more inspiring, maybe more creative, maybe more captivating or exciting if you would have made different decisions? I'm going to tell you something, and maybe for some of you, this might be a hard pill to swallow, but I want you to take a big gulp of water after it and swallow hard and look yourself in the face, in the mirror, okay? And just ask yourself the hard question because I want to be the type of person that asks myself the hard questions. So if you can really look at yourself and say, look, the life that I have right now are made up of the small decisions that I made every day, period. Your life is made up of the small daily decisions that you made every single day. It's hardwired. So how does this show up in your life and business? Okay. So every single time that you chose not to work out, not to start that business, not to post, not to write that email, not to build that system, right? Not to call that lead or follow up with someone who was interested in your business. And all of a sudden you got too scared to pick up the phone. When you don't ask for the sale and you don't pitch your products, that is being hardwired into your brain. Your brain is telling you, I am dead scared of doing these things. I'm going to react in this way. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to procrastinate. Instead, I'm going to go and think I need a website, think I need brand colors. I'm going to go and do something that's not going to actually reach out to people because when it comes to people, I'm too scared. So I have to protect you right now from what you're feeling. And if I can do that, then we'll be good. And when you do that over and over and over and over and over again, like, I just want to ask you, show of hands, right? I want you to raise your hand wherever you at. Show of hands. How many of you are terrified to talk about your business? How many of you are terrified to ask for the sale? Terrified to post about your products? terrified to go and pitch to someone in person, whether that be at a company, in a school, to a friend. I don't care what kind of business you're in. You could be in network marketing. How scared are you to talk about your products, to talk about what you offer? Because you don't feel like a real business owner. Why? Because prior to selling these products, you were doing something else or possibly are doing something else because network marketing teaches you how to start part-time. So if you could start part-time, you're still in, in your workplace. And if you're still in your workplace, then people are like, wait a minute, you're switching it up on everybody. 
And that does something for your conditioning. That does something to your central nervous system that is so used to going into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And we'll talk about those in other podcasts this year. So y'all better subscribe, honey. If you love the information you're, you're receiving right now. But what I mean is your central nervous system goes crazy. And you're still responding out of your adolescent self. You're still responding to life as your childhood self. You're still responding to life as that teenager who felt rejected by their parents, who felt like they didn't have a voice in the house, who felt like they were unloved, unseen, unheard. And you're responding to your business in that way. And it's getting you caught up, honey. You are caught up in trauma. That's what you caught up in. And I know that God has called me into the marketplace to break that off of you. Enough is enough. Listen, Christian women entrepreneurs are the ones that I know God has me after. Why? Because I know that there are some things that you will face that the woman who is not in business is not going to face. Listen, business will teach you how to meet up with yourself more than you ever know. If you're setting out to do anything great, then I'm letting you know right now, there's going to be opposition. There's going to be the enemy at your door. There's going to be chances and temptations for you to cave in, give up, have doubt, and think that you ain't got nothing new to say. And I'm telling you, it's only because you have only knocked on the door of your potential, but you haven't entered into the place of the the misery that you will go through in order to get to the other side. There is no promised land without the wilderness. And it's not unless you're willing to go through the wilderness that you will reach your promised land, that you will reach your full potential. But when you get to the promised land, there was also a way to live in the promised land. See, because you can't go into the promised land with wilderness thinking. So don't think that you can go into the new relationship with the wilderness mindset. Open up that building, that business, whatever, with a wilderness mindset. You have to have a mindset of abundance, and that requires a cultivation of what God has given you. Are you cultivating your talents and your gifts? So I want to speak to some people today. If you're younger than 25, right? You're in your adulthood, so meaning you're 19 and up, but you're younger than 25, so your prefrontal cortex is not fully developed yet. Don't let that be an excuse for you, but I'm just letting you know I'm going to cut you some slack, (laughs) right? Because you literally are developing your decision making, but it's the best time for you. Why? Because whatever you wire into your brain right now becomes your default. The more you can do what is aiming towards your goals, what is aiming to a life that glorifies God and that you find most satisfying, when you aim towards that, that will be hardwired into your prefrontal cortex and moving forward, you have the best chance in the world. So I don't want you to count yourself out or use the fact that, oh, but my prefrontal cortex is not really developed. So my decision making skills are shot. Like, I don't want you to use that as an excuse. I actually want you to use that to your advantage. And for everyone else who is 25 and older, I want you to understand that we have conditioned ourselves to avoid, to resist to self-sabotage ourselves in circumstances, when we fight against anything that feels uncertain, when we want control, right? We've hardwired that jaunt into our brain. So how you operate is because of your conditioning, is because of how you were raised, it's because of the beliefs that you formed in your earlier years that have now become hardwired into your brain. But you need to use your mind in order to train your brain. And the Bible says that we can have a renewed mind in Christ Jesus and that old things have gone and new things have come. So I want to give you an encouragement to let you know that everything that you have been 
everything that you have done, every sin that you have committed, every wrong business plan and wrong business venture that you have explored, it's all gone. And we have a chance to make it new right now. Right now. But that starts with a decision. A decision that's going to work for you. A decision where you now start aligning your actions with your goals and your goals with the will of God. And the will of God is to show yourself approved. He's going to work it out anyway. So I need you to know that when you are pursuing that relationship, when you are pursuing your health goals, when you are pursuing your potential, all of those things are in your possession right now because of what Christ did for you and the access that you have to the renewed mind. So what's the purpose of this podcast today? What can we do to recognize some of these conditions in us that we have, some of these distortions, you know, the shoulds mentality, I should be doing this and I should be doing that and I should be doing this. All that does is bring more self-judgment and self-condemnation on somebody. We really need to stop the whole should talk because you're shoulding all over yourself. Okay? You need to cut it out. How can we change some of the conditioning for our good? How can we look into our past and say, I can use this for my future? How can we say, listen, the map is not the territory and where I've been is not where I'm going. And I want to know how to do this. Number one, we have to become more aware of our wiring. We have to become more aware of our wiring. Number two, we need to decide according to what we want and what we desire and not according to what we feel in the moment. A lot of us do our deciding according to what we feel. We overeat, we over shop, we overwatch Netflix and Hulu, we overdo it according to how we feel. Why? Because we're resisting and we are avoiding and fighting against what's actually going on inside of us. So we do other things and we buffer so that we don't have to feel. And lastly, we need to commit to the decisions that we make. Listen, the word commit means to act or to do, but I love even more what the word committed means. It means to be bound to be obligated to a person or a thing. And in Romans 1, Paul talks about, I, Paul, a bondservant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, a special messenger, personally chosen, a representative. I'm set apart for the preaching of the gospel of God, the good news of salvation. My God, I read that this morning and I was saying to myself, you know what, Lord, how personally chosen do I feel? And I want to ask you the same question. How personally chosen do you feel for the passion and the desire you have or the assignment that you feel is on your life? How personally chosen? So if I'm not talking about a bunch of sheep that just walk together and everybody's walking in one line. I'm talking about personally selected out of the sheep. It's funny, my husband and I were watching the movie 300 the other day. And for those who never saw 300, please go watch it because it's an amazing, amazing movie. And we were watching 300. And as I was looking at this scene, when the leader of this squad came and told one of them, they were about to go into battle and the leader knew they were going to die. They were going to die for the mission at hand, period, right? But he takes this one guy before they go out to battle. He takes this one guy and he says, hey, I want you to go back home. Now, they had traveled a long way. I want you to imagine you're a part of this squad that has traveled so far and you're fighting for a cause and everybody's in the same vein. You guys are all soldiers willing to put your life on the line for something and Your leader tells you, you have to go back. You're not going to fight this battle for all your life. Fighting is what you knew. Fighting for your country, for your people, for a cause is all you knew. But he tells this one guy, 
I need you to go back and I need you to write our story. Write the story because every single soldier in this camp does not have the gift that you have. And only you can write this story. And then he says, send a message to my wife as well. And he gives him a piece of jewelry that would signify to his wife that he died in battle. He said, no words need to be said. And he gives this man this piece of jewelry. It was because of that man's talent, because of how that man was gifted, that he was able to write the story of the 300 men who went into battle. No one would have ever known about their story had this one man not fought and instead walked the path that was chosen for him. So I'm going to ask you in the same way, what is it that God has chosen for you to do? What battle must you stop fighting? What thoughts must you stop rehearsing? Who do you need to forgive? What do you need to let go of? What mindset do you need to destroy in order for you to write a new story? In order for you to have legacy that lasts? for your children's children's children. This battle is not for you to fight. This battle is for you to give up, to turn away, to move on, and to write your story, and to share the gospel through your life, through your experiences, what God has seen you through, freed you from, delivered you of, and overall saved your life. What is that story? The entire purpose of this podcast was to have you become more aware how your conditioning and your thoughts and your feelings and your actions are all produced by what is happening inside of you because of your past. And so I wanted to help you guys out today and I have a free downloadable sheet for you. You'll become more aware of the conditioning that you have the narrative and the story that is replaying in your head, how your beliefs about money, about relationships, and overall, how have you taken them into your business? And also, I show you how to just do this one little tweak. It's just a small tweak, and it'll help you reach your goals, how to change those patterns and start making more impact. I'm going to absolutely enjoy this podcast this year. I have been having something inside of me just bubbling up and I'm ready to just pour out. So go ahead, download that PDF, answer those questions so that you can start becoming more aware of how your conditioning gets in the way of your business, okay? And how to tweak that so that you can start making more impact and making more money. I love you. I mean it. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Yes, girl. So you just heard an episode of the She Matters University podcast. And if this was beneficial for you, I definitely want you to subscribe to the podcast, share it with your friends, because this is how we grow in our leadership as godly women. I want you to know that every single share helps us reach more women just like you. So if you can please leave a comment on how this podcast blessed you, what you learned, any takeaways. If you are interested in joining She Matters University, we talk all things business for the Christian woman entrepreneur. If you want to start your business, haven't started a business, if you are just doing life and you want to know how to be a better mom, I want you to know that this is the place for you. So check us out at MaggieMejia.com and just click on Join She Matters University and I will tell you all about it. Remember, love people, be present, and always do what matters. Peace!